Being over 30 years old, Linux has been through many development changes, many best practice changes. What was a good idea 20 years ago might be a terrible idea now. Don't get me started on Linux version numbers. And since some of the earliest days of Linux, there's been this really weird practice called magic numbers. This is in 0.10, the second public release of Linux. And you can see this macro here, super magic, to find over in this file on line 40. This is used to indicate a Minix file system. But in recent months, this practice is finally coming to its proper end. But before we can get into all of that history, let's talk about what magic numbers actually do. Now, if you have a comp sci background like I do, you may have heard the phrase before in reference to sprinkling numbers around your code base without storing them in a variable or a constant. Let's say, for example, you have a loop that goes from 1 to 10. Now, just knowing there's a loop there, what does that 10 actually mean? Is it your number of fingers? Is it the number of toes you have? Is it the number of database connections? You have absolutely no idea. And let's say you have a bunch of loops all using that same number 10 and they're supposed to have the exact same meaning. What if that number changes? Well, now you need to go and manually change all of those loops. A much better practice is storing this number in a variable or a constant, which gives you the ability to easily change all of these in one swing, and also gives you a bit of self-documenting code. Let's say it actually is database connections, now it says database connections. Now that is certainly a type of magic number, but this type is a little bit different. This explained really well inside of the magic file. More on what this file is in just a bit. It is a very good idea to protect kernel data structures with magic numbers. This allows you to check at runtime whether A, a structure has been clobbered, so basically has the structure been corrupted, is the structure not structured the way it should be, and B, you've passed the wrong structure to a routine. You've passed the wrong data type to a function. This last is especially useful, particularly when you're passing pointers to structures via a void pointer. Basically, a void pointer is pointing at arbitrary data and doesn't have a data type assigned to it. Basically, what this is, is a checksum for your structures. Normally, you would have this as the first element, and if this number is correct, you can assume this structure is a certain type. So with the super magic example from earlier, if you receive a structure that has the magic number set to super magic, you can assume that this is a properly set up Minix file system structure. And because this is just an integer in a structure, it is very easy to parse out and very easy to work out with debugging tools if something is set wrong, even with the debugging tools that existed back in the 90s. And over time, this practice became more and more popular. When EXT came around, there was EXT super magic to mark an EXT file system. There was a magic number added into SK buff. There were a bunch of debugging magic numbers added into malloc. But this quickly became a problem. Now you have all of these magic numbers without any form of central documentation. If you saw a magic number randomly being used in a file, there was nowhere to go to work out what the magic number actually was. Now, in the case of malloc, it is being documented in line, but many of them weren't going to be like that. So some sort of central document was needed. This is where the magic file came in. And down the bottom here, it documents a lot of the known in-use magic numbers. Coincidentally, this is actually one of the earliest pieces of Linux documentation after the basic how to compile it, how to install. This document has been in the kernel for a very, very long time and sort of sat in basically an unchanged state for a long time as well, including uh, this right here. This spelling mistake was here for about four months, and no one noticed it. In my case, I probably would have missed it as well. Now, you may have spotted this path here. This file existed in the root of the Linux kernel. At the time, there was no procedure for documentation. As I said, this is one of the earliest pieces. There was no documentation folder. The documentation just existed in the root of the project. 
But eventually that did change. In preparation for the 2.0 release, a lot of cleanup was being done, moving files in new locations, coming up with standards on how to do documentation, and the file was moved to documentation slash magic dash number dot txt. And along with this, the file had also grown a little bit. At this point, it had 21 entries, and this is just the numbers that are being properly documented. Going on up to the 2.2.0 release, this had grown again. Now, it's at 51 numbers. And going on up to the 2.2.0 release, this list had grown once again. Now, it had 51 separate entries. It was very clear by this point that magic numbers were a core part of the Linux development cycle. Jumping up once again, two years later, to the 2.4.0 release, the file looks exactly the same. There's not a single new magic number. Now this doesn't mean that no new magic numbers were added into the kernel. There actually were new ones being used, but um... If you don't keep your documentation up to date, your documentation doesn't stay up to date. Over time, things are going to slip, and that's exactly what started to happen. Because if we jump up once again to the 2.6 release, it tells a very, very different story. Now, there is a hundred entries in here. Also, <laughs> it links to separate pieces of documentation explaining separate magic numbers. Now, if we go and include those numbers, well, this one has, you know, a couple of entries in it. This one has a couple of entries as well, not really that many. This one, on the other hand, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's probably closer to 300 magic numbers at this point. Maybe like 250, but they're clearly not being documented in the documentation file. And judging by the earlier files, there is without a doubt other magic numbers that aren't being tracked here. So, basically it's a giant mess that nobody has any idea what's going on with it, but everybody accepts that magic numbers are useful, so they just keep using them. As long as the individual projects in the kernel know what their magic numbers mean, it's fine. If nobody else does, uh, who really cares? And over the next decade, things didn't really get any better. There were some minor restructures, removal of obsolete entries, but the file was never properly up to date and never properly maintained. One of the biggest updates it had was in mid-2015, changing the format from the format it's using in this file into the RST format, the restructured markup text format, or restructured text markup, one of those names, basically changing it into a markup format. But even though it's easier to read, the contents are still basically the same. It still links out to other documentation instead of documenting the magic numbers in the magic number documentation file. Why it did this for so long, I have no idea. And from then on the file continued to fade into obscurity even more so than it already had. One of the main reasons for that is kernel practices began to change. The idea of magic numbers sort of started to fall out of favour. And this file just didn't really get that much attention until earlier this year, when Achelenia Ziemiańska went on a crusade against magic numbers, because they weren't being used anyway, so why are they here? And made this patch set along with other patch sets, pretty much just destroying any magic numbers that were left over. Magic number RST is a low-value historical relic at best, and misleading craft at worst. Misleading because it was never up to date anyway. This latter half cleans out the remaining entries either by recognizing that they aren't actually magic numbers, or by cutting them out entirely and enters the file. At this patch set, there is 14 magic numbers left, and the last patch in the set is literally just deleting the magic number file because it's gonna be empty anyway. All noted magic numbers have been removed, and we don't want to encourage magicking up kernel structs going forward. Now I like how it says all noted magic numbers, indicating that they're very aware that um, there are probably magic numbers that are not noted. Okay, so it's one thing that the file is being removed, but why did the practice go away in the first place? 
Well, this video is heavily based on an article from LWN. Jonathan did an incredible job on this, and I highly recommend you go and read it. I'll leave it in the description down below. But he also includes an explanation on why this might have happened. There is no clear point where the development community made a collective decision to move away from the magic number practice. It just sort of faded away. There are probably a few reasons behind this change. The kernel community for many years now tried to use type safe interfaces rather than passing void pointers around, making it less likely that the wrong structure type will be passed into a function. If you know what type you're receiving, having a checksum there to make sure it's the correct type just doesn't really matter. Also, developers spend less time staring at hex dumps of data, preferring more structured output, trace points, and interactive buggers as ways of tracking down problems. Debugging features in the kernel's memory allocators mean that many sorts of memory corruption issues will be caught directly. Basically, the tooling for memory corruption is better now, so you don't really need the old, less sophisticated tooling. Magic numbers are just not as helpful as they once were. When the tooling was worse, magic numbers made a lot of sense. Now the tooling is better, and the new tooling does a lot of the stuff that magic numbers were doing. So, they're sort of obsolete now. Even though magic numbers are a relic of the past, they are still an incredibly important piece of the Linux kernel history. So I hope you learned something today, whether it's about the fact that Linux used to not have standards for documentation, whether it's about the magic numbers themselves, or anything else I might have spoken about. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and if you like this video, remember to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here. Go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Silly, Bearer Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.